And, and uh, for, so for everybody checking out here at McCurdy's Comedy Theater and Humor Institute. Uh -huh. That's right. Shane, uh, th this, uh, we started doing this uh, podcast about a year ago, so this is the second time that uh, Shane has done it. And, uh, and, and usually we, we kick it off with just getting to know what the comics are like off stage more, which is what we did last time. It's what I get asked a lot from the audience is, is that person the same off stage as they are on stage? Uh, and, and we, we kind of went over that, and, and you're exactly the same. There's absolutely no difference whatsoever. Yeah, people always ask me, they're like, oh, that, uh, they talk to me afterwards, and they're like, oh, that's your real voice. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, that is my real voice. <laughs> See, I don't even know what's strange about my voice. Like, I can't hear it, but apparently my voice is very odd. Uh, <laughs> so... I, and I get it when I go home to visit my family, because um, now, now that I've been gone for a while, I hear my mom talk, oh, goodness, Shan, how's the comedy going? And so I hear a little bit of the Wisconsin accent. But, From Wisconsin, uh, yeah. didn't, uh, didn't go to college, had, nope. had the, the, the furniture store job is real. Yep. Uh, uh, although, I, I, rem and I loved it when you tried going to college one semester, you tried taking 19 hours, and working at the factory uh, like 10 hours or something like that, and you, yeah. it resulted in you getting anal leakage. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yes. <laughs> that's all true. So I, uh, no, it's really strange what, ha what I decided, but because I was a real, I was a fuck up, and uh, so I was trying to straighten my life out, and so I decided to like take all these classes and, and work overtime at this, third shift job and whatnot, and then I found out about this, it's called Wolf Sleep. I think they did a thing of it on, on Seinfeld, where basically like every three hours you sleep for 15 to 20 minutes, and I did that for a few months, and uh, it was really hard um, to do. It was really strange. It worked for a while, but what happened is I would work, I'd have to try to sleep for 15 minutes on my breaks, and if you didn't hit it just right, your system got crazy and you'd start hallucinating and stuff. And so I was, in a last ditch effort to keep doing all this, I went to GNC, and not knowing, being young and not knowing, they'll just sell you whatever shit that they get. So I'm like, oh, I need to stay up and I need more energy. And rather than be like, you need to sleep, they were like, take all this crap. And so I took all that crap and then I got anal leakage. <laughs> and then I dropped out of school because of anal leakage. I'm like, not worth it. Right, right. You, you decided it was school that was giving you anal leakage. Yeah, yeah. Somewhat. Now, I ask you something. Uh, you are uh, background. I met him at the Boston Comedy Festival. You were uh, uh, 21, maybe. Uh, no, no, I'm I'm 32 now. Oh, oh yeah, no, you're older, 25. Uh, so yeah, uh, so 25. I just have a. I met him there. I have an adorable face. Yes, um, but you were just getting. You you had just kind of you know gotten to the point where you were ready to get. Yeah. So I've been able so to kind of watch. So this would have been it. about. Six hours, or six hours, six years ago. Right. Six years ago. So in six years, six which I want to say that, I, I, it normally, normally, it takes ten years, eight to ten years to develop a headline act. Uh, you're almost there. And, and uh, uh, no, uh, oh, hey, hey, no, no. No, but I, you, I thought you were joking <laughs> until you went, no, I'm just joking. Now I think you're serious. <laughs> um, <laughs> you have moved up very fast. And, and, so and that's I, was, great. I was about three years in yes. when Les discovered me. And then right after that, I was in a more important festival and I got an award there. And that was my big break. And I got on Conan. And then they had me back right away. And then I was a full time headliner and things kind of took off for me in a hurry which is interesting fortunately i plateaued because that was getting crazy um, <laughs> but, um, well you get comedy central. my career kind of petered out because who needs that success? you got a comedy central um, special right yeah, and, and, yeah. and a few things like on that along that lines i, I and, and tell me if i'm wrong i think that part of that and i've uh, i've there's been just a few people that have had kind of the quick move up, and you're very talented to be able to do that. Um, Ho Hollywood, LA, is really nuts about finding young, but already there, you know, and want that to be there. But it takes a long time to really get your chops. Yeah, and they're kind of dumb. I mean, like people, people in their early 20s don't know. I don't, I don't even know what happened back there. Uh, I, well, 
What? I'm so curious. <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> what, 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 what is it? Uh, that it's, it's unrelated. This is sad. I know that laugh. Uh, it, it's oh, unrelated do? to what's going oh, on. Oh, I'm here. sure of that, that. that. That's a laugh that there's something much funnier than us right I'm now. I'm thinking well. it's a callback to anal leakage at this point. Uh, 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 oh, yeah, no, but go be. ahead. Go ahead. Um, we were talking about that. Talking about? Moving, up, moving up quickly. Uh, LA is oh, looking yeah, for. Yeah. So the industry's young. like, oh, yeah, this kid's he's young and fresh because they're all idiots. They don't know like what to look uh, Otherwise, you'd get someone that's like, you know, uh, more middle aged that like knows, has had life experience and like knows a little bit about how life works. Instead, they try to get uh, dopey fucking kids that kind of are somewhat good looking that they can tell what to do and they'll do whatever and uh and they don't ever know they they don't ever try to like look ahead at what the trends are they're like uh they see something they're like oh this cat video got 10 million hits can you be a cat <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. So, so they they try to follow like whatever trends that you guys have already set with like by voting with your youtube views or whatever well you know there's um, a, that that thing and and for you as an artist especially when you're younger and and you think i think there's a part of all of us i know when i first got in the business i thought in five years i was going to be on letterman i was everything was going to just start i mean i was so did so, i and i was right but you <laughs> were was, was, was what was uh, so it was it kind of i kind of got validated very early on and i had like a fair it was it was really uh i was like oh i guess this is just the way it goes just nothing and then reality sits in after a while right uh, <laughs> and then then it then then you're you're in the work of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, talking about the Bigfoot thing, that to me is that prime example of these television shows out there that are complete bullshit. Well, what's but interesting they get is ratings. They, but you say you applaud, but somebody's watching this shit. It gets honey boo boo. The 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 damn. The, the 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 Bigfoot show. I mean, it's these show, and they actually what, spend some money on What, what money is Honey on Boo Boo on? What network is that on? Oh, is I don't that, even is that know. TLC? Yeah. TLC. That's the Learning Channel. The and, Learning Channel. And, and Animal Planet, by the way. In case you haven't uh, been able to tell from my act, I am <laughs> into that stuff. And I like if you ever see like Planet Earth or Life or Frozen Planet, like you can actually. I really believe that you can learn valuable life lessons and learn a lot about how life functions from that stuff. But that stuff's not what's being shown. It's like uh, it's Bigfoot and and like uh, shark attack, cat cop or some yeah, weird yeah. thing. Like well, we're cops and we catch cats or something like that. And it's not about animals. And the goof is they're low budget shows but they still spend quite a bit of money I mean to the average Joe Blow on doing these things and so it, it leads itself into people like us artists artists who are trying to move along but then you start thinking like the Bigfoot honey boo-boo you start thinking right. about what is this what kind of crazy fucking outrageous show can I come up with that will bring me this attention because it seems like that's what the public wants to it's see. It's like, ah, uh, might, might just be dumb enough to work. Yeah, might just be that's dumb. what you start to feel but like. But the thing is, is they're like projecting that. That's not what most people, I learned, I learned this, uh, I learned this early on in my career is to always give uh, people as much credit as you can for otherwise i wouldn't come in here and like do a bunch of weird science jokes uh, I, I, like a lot of a lot of comedians would be like oh they're not gonna get that shit don't bother with it but i've learned that if you just give people credit and be like oh they're intelligent enough uh, everyone's intelligent enough to get this shit and uh, uh, but but the industry and a lot of other comics and uh, they they just think the general public is like oh what a bunch of idiots uh, just give them just feed them the bullshit that's what they want and uh, it's unfortunate. So watch smarter programming, and then. Um, and All right. Then my question is this: Have you ever sat around and just thought of what would be some crazy ass show? Because I'll tell uh, on my end. I'll tell you what that was pitched to us uh, twice was the reality show of 
a family-run comedy club. You know, me, my wife, the crazy, wacky staff. You know, I've, I've got one lady that's British, another one that's Asian. You know, you hit, you hit all the demographics. You, you, I've got a teenage daughter that can come through here and have tantrums and, and all that kind of stuff. They go, oh, I'd just be a hit. It was nobody's doing it. And I go, you might be right. Fuck no. <laughs> no. No. I do not want. But, I mean. Uh, 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 the, uh, the industry's. Uh, like uh, the industry's pulling up in their in their limos, banging down Les's door with fucking battery. <laughs> but come, take our millions. And Les is going no, no, stay away from me. Yeah, I guess if they offered me guaranteed money, I'd go for it. You're exactly right. Uh, we all. You're exactly That's right. That's the sad thing. And and I'll eventually I say all this crap, and then you'll see me next week and it's like look who's wearing clown makeup that'll be like a new show and all look who's that. hosting honey boo boo's new show it's shane moss um and i'll do it and i'll take if that it's money well for money great actor jack lemon always thought he'd take any role because he's an actor and that's what he's supposed to do yeah but so and you know, we talk about offstage and when i was looking at your last thing the one thing that we didn't talk about i know you're a guy that really is into the, the art you work on it a lot you spend a lot of time writing and you spend a lot of time thinking about development and your career what do you do when you're not doing that i mean is there something that you that gets you away from this that you, you go this is just fun for me away from comedy so i can get that out of my head well, I mean, I spend uh, some time on the beach, which is fun. Um, and but I usually bring a, a notebook. I love uh, like writing and working on new material. I like it more than performing, actually. I uh, it's not that I don't like performing; it's just not my favorite aspect of my job. I like uh, I like finding um, interesting subject matter and trying to write um, jokes about it. So and 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 then I if you see me uh, again next year. Usually I'll have an entirely different act than the year before. I try to do that, um, or pretty close to it. And so this last year I got into, um, I just kind of, uh, I started, I saw a few weird science of sex fun fact things. I was like, oh, that's kind of goofy. I could make a joke out of that. And then I started um, looking into it a little more, and I got into um, some of this evolutionary psychology stuff. And I had just gone through some relationship changes, and I was dealing with uh, um, a lot of relationship stuff. So that was on my mind a lot. And I was kind of trying to figure out our behavior and everything. And I started reading some books about it. And, uh, and the stuff just kind of blew my mind. And I thought, it, and it really changed the way that I looked at, at the world. So, um, so you love doing research. So I like doing that. And then mm. I try to turn that into different But yet jokes. it's all comedy. There's not like. You know, I have I love golf. I play golf. I enjoy working on that as a separate thing. You, you don't have an you don't race cars. You don't you don't play tennis. You don't uh, nothing. There's not a side thing. I like spending. I like being home and spending time with my girlfriend, and we'll watch documentaries or go to the beach or something like that. But I'm when I'm on the road, I I like I used to when I used to travel around. I used to go around and see all the cities and travel and do all that, and I should do more of it. Now I honestly just like sitting in a hotel room doing research and trying to write jokes. And you're good at it. Oh, yeah. thank you. Well, and I will say, the comics that I've known through the years that have expressed what you express, and that is that the performance end of it was not their favorite part of it. It was more the development part. Almost without fail, all of them have end up, ended up as writers for television shows and for, for other uh, performers uh, because that was where their passion was. Not, not that that's you, but that, that seems right. like kind of the natural thing. Uh, does anybody, yes, uh, any questions at all? And I mean, it can't be too bizarre, obviously, uh, or too ridiculous. I mean, really, I, anything. I, it can be ridiculous. Well, it, it, can I can I can I ask, can I rephrase that in a way that I think where you're headed with that is that uh, at this point of your career, what's your what's your goal? What's your next goal to get to? Oh, were you asking day-to-day -day stuff or my goals? You can start the day-to-day. -day. 
<laughs> well, the stuff that I've gotten into lately is uh, I'm pretty excited about. I used to um, I used to like uh, like physics and stuff, and that was uh, really hard to write jokes about physics for an audience and. And so I would have to like turn it into a jo dick joke. Like it'd be like, uh, <laughs> uh, if I want to explain like the theory of relativity and make it funny on stage, I'd have to be like, well, if there's a train circling the earth at close to light speed and you're standing on a station watching it, and my girlfriend and I are inside and we're having sex, she might complain that I only lasted for a minute. But to you guys, that would seem like eight years. So what is she complaining about? So I have to kind of. Uh, it, it, it was it was too challenging. Uh, maybe maybe in the future. But I found this stuff, and um, and it's very accessible to people. And you hear it, and you go, oh yeah, that's that's uh, really interesting. And it does get me thinking about um, life in a different way. Like for example, uh, and you'll never hear about it on the news uh, as far as aggression goes and you see everything in the news with uh, wars and murders and everything else. If you look, 95% um, of homicides on earth are committed by uh, males uh, between the age of 16 and 26, and it's uh, usually single men. And, bec and the reason probably why that is is because males have to compete for mates. And, um, and usually you can do that by getting a job, uh, and, but sometimes you don't have access to that. And so you resort back to like caveman aggression. We're not consciously aware that we're doing this, but if you look at the statistics, it's there. And and um, and same with like teenage pregnancy, which no one talks about. Um, what's happening there is is it's always in cultures where the lifespan has been shortened, and they're not your body's aware of it, but you aren't. And so what happens is you start having a drive earlier on to make a baby younger. And, and so in cultures where there's a shorter average lifespan, there will be more teen pregnancies. And in cultures like uh, it, uh, low poverty and everything, there's going to be single, single men will commit a lot of murders and aggression. They end up in jail and everything else. And no one's talking about that because, because it's mating. So no one takes it seriously. And, um, and so there's things like that, and I could talk all night about it, that just blow my mind. And you, so know, you know, when you say that, too, I want to say that work, when I, working in bars when I was younger and in my, in my 20s and early 30s. Oh, yeah, I've done and some just working field in, a research. Bar, in nightclubs, field research. And I goes, we would, I, a buddy of mine used to always have a thing. He goes, he go, we'd be a, be a busy night, and he'll go, there's getting ready to be trouble. And I go, how can you tell? And he goes, too many bulls, not enough heifers. There's getting ready to be trouble. And there would yeah. be. There would be. The fight would break out not long after that. So to answer yeah. your question, because I've gotten into this, I've, I've since like reached out to some scientists in the field and stuff that I like, and I've networked with some people, and like I just met a lady at UCLA at a conference. Uh, and so I'm thinking about maybe writing a book about some of this stuff and um, starting a blog and... And I have, it all originated off of a kind of a TV show idea that I have about like the science of sex and having different scientists on and comedians and... You know, one of uh, the things that I, th as you say that, that yeah. I think a lot of us comics have in common is that a lot of us are very passionate about wanting to communicate about serious things, but we just feel like... Who the hell wants to listen to us do that? So, <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, that's a, so we that's have a to point. find a way to make it funny. Yeah. So that's that's when I kind of had a, uh, I kind of had about a year ago when I got into this, I decided that I, here I better do that. Uh, mm, I decided that I didn't like uh, doing that anymore. Like I was a good joke writer, and it wasn't fulfilling anymore. And so I wanted to do something that I cared about. And so I worked very hard to try to make the stuff that I cared about funny, and I think ultimately that's going to pay off more. And I think that a lot of comics are just like, you just have to tell people just the, uh, just the lowest, easiest laughs, the crowd pleasers, and that's how you get them, and that's how, and I don't think so. I think pe people aren't giving um, audiences enough credit, and I think, like you guys, uh, to keep up with stuff tonight, like some of the stuff that I was talking about was actually some pretty high concept stuff, and and you guys, which is probably different stuff than any of you have heard before, and to keep up and to laugh at that in like a community of people that probably you know don't want to hear about evolution and all that stuff, I understand. Um, <laughs> is that I give you guys honestly, I give you a lot of credit 
um, for like uh, for being open-minded and and everything. And I get by the way, this is it's a hard act because I get it from both ends. I get conservatives don't want to hear about evolution, and then liberals don't want to hear about gender roles. So I basically written an act that nobody likes um, <laughs> uh, because sounds like Congress. Yeah, yeah. Sounds like Obama. So, yeah. <laughs> Anybody another question? Is there any, any? Yes, right back there. Yep. Very long fingers. Where, where are you headed with this, ma'am? He's got big feet, too. Yeah. No, go ahead. Just a comment. You, wow. I guess that whole, I guess that whole, this, this action. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> obviously. Size 13 feet? Let's yeah. just say um, I'm a little too big <laughs> for my girlfriend. My foot barely fits in her vagina. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? So, so I'm kind of playing it by ear, but those are some of my goals. Uh, my goal's always just been stand up and turning over like a new act each year and, and touring and like I like my life the way that it is I wouldn't mind a little more money but uh, but I I like it's not really that's not like my main motivator so me and Shane talk about it get up every day do what we want be able to make people laugh and we have beautiful girlfriends life is good yeah life is good anything else anything else yes right here Oh, thank you. It's coming from the Croatian table, by the way. Uh, yes, they're, uh, they're Croatian. Hon honestly, I... Uh, You've impressed the Croatians. Uh, uh, that's, that's funny. <laughs> it's true. Uh, oh, good. Uh, well, Shane will be with us uh, through Sunday night. Tell your friends about it. Shane, where are you going to set up for the, uh, the, the Shane stashes? Oh, yeah, out in, in uh, their mustaches. Mustaches. Jeez. Excuse Get me. It. Get Mos it straight. Mustaches. Uh, out, out and back uh, okay. on, the, on you, the table. You, big hand for Shane. I'm going to let him go head out. Thank you so that I'll, I'll give you a couple announcements. Um, Shane will be here through Sunday night. Tomorrow morning, 107.9. We'll be on there at 8 o'clock with David and Christina.